DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him an extra $100. And here's the word right here. And Groucho will meet our first couple in just a moment. Well, Groucho, uh, Charlie Heimstra and his daughter Rowena are first tonight. So folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide on an extra $100. It's a common word, it's something you see every day. Charlie and uh, Rowena Heimstra. 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 Where are you from, Charles? Well, I came from a little town in the northern part of Holland. They call it Pengen. 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 Yeah, thank you. Thinking? Thing Jim. Thing Gun. Thing Jim. Thing Gun. No, you got it. No, 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 darn no. Thing Jim. Thing Yum. That's it. And you have to do that every time you. Every time. I, even when I write a letter, I write a. Mm -hmm. well, how big is Thing Gun? <laughs> there are. Uh, do you do that too? What? Thing Gun. Thing Yum? No, I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> well, I rarely baffle this early in an interview. How big is Ping Gong? There are uh, 800 people and 3,000 cows. <laughs> Must be pretty wild on New Year's Eve there. Huh? <laughs> but what is life like for a little boy in Holland? What did you do for excitement? Did you set fire to the windmills? No, I didn't do just exactly that, but I done a lot of things that I shouldn't do. When my oldest well, sister... you don't have to be in Holland for that, you know. <laughs> when my oldest sister got married, you know, they, show, they serve brandy and raisins when somebody gets married. They serve brandied raisins? Yeah, they mix it up together, see? With brandy and raisins? Yeah, and then they sit on long tables and they put the pot with brandy and raisins on this table. <laughs> when the party was over... They carried mother, everybody out, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, my mother said I had to clean up the whole thing and give it to the chicken. But I also fed the brandy and the raisins to the chickens. And boy, did that rooster have a load. And all the chickens were dry. Well, Charlie, there's nothing unusual about chickens getting loaded. I've had stewed chicken many times. Well, Rowena, do you live yes. with your parents? Yes, we live on a farm. We raise chickens and cows. Do you know why a cow gives buttermilk, Rowena? Well, I don't know, but it'd be awfully valuable, I think. That's not the answer. <laughs> the answer is, what mm -hmm. else can a cow give buttermilk? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just got that one. How many, how many chickens do you have in your farm, Charlie? I got about And how many are condemned? Oh, that is none condemned, but no. I got 1,500 chickens. You got 1,500 chickens? Yeah. That's a lot of chickens, isn't That's it? That's a lot and of chickens. How many eggs do you get? Oh, about eight, nine hundred. How many roosters do you carry? Well, I haven't got any roosters. Because when I buy the baby chicks... You have 1,500 hens and no roosters and you sell chickens? Yeah. When I buy baby chicks, they're all hens, all females. How do you know? I'll tell you. We put them in a brooder and they guarantee those things that they're going to be hens. <laughs> Well, don't you ever get any roosters? I do get some roosters in and everybody makes a mistake, and even those guys. <laughs> that rooster has certainly got something to crow about. <laughs> what do you do with this rooster when you do find him? Oh, I give him to Mama, and she put it in the pot when it is big enough. How's your love life, Rowena? Do you have a lot of boyfriends, or are you a rooster hater like your father? Well, no, I'm engaged, and I'm going to be married in about three months. Congratulations. Thank you. Charlie, you're, you're losing your daughter, but just remember, you're also cutting down on the old grocery bill. That's right. I've been yeah. thinking about that. <laughs> How did you meet your intended, Rowena? Oh, I met him at an Air Force dance, and uh, he took me out. First, I didn't want to go out with him, but he took me out. Why didn't you want to go out with him? Well, I shouldn't say it. He's here. And <laughs> no, I didn't want to go out with him. We could ask him to leave. I mean, if this <laughs> is a confidential and, story, and, you want and, to. No. no, he was kind of fresh. 
Uh, he took... <laughs> so he came over and he came to take me out. And after he brought me home, well, he kept trying to kiss me. And I'm not used to that, so I tried to push him off kissed? the front porch. And I told, Wait a minute, I told him I'd tell my kissed? dad huh? if... I told him I'd tell my dad if... You wanted your father to kiss him? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you want to kiss him? Well, oh, just once, but he was, <clears throat> he was awfully uh, well, I forward. Knew... Oh. <laughs> Hadn't you ever Once been was kissed? Enough. Hadn't you ever been oh, kissed? Oh yes. I kissed Once my horse and <laughs> This is certainly a great tribute to her husband. <laughs> Charlie, how did you find out Rowena was going to be married? Did the fellow ask you for a hand or did he simply say, Give us two bucks, Daddy O? We've got the urge to merge. Oh, he, he was pretty good. He came up to me and he asked for that hand. Did you know that he had kissed her before you... Uh, no, I was... didn't ask those questions because Would I you know have... how I was when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> no! Gee, oh, I know. Over there. Yeah. Think we could get her up here and ask her? Huh? Oh, sure. Yeah. Would you, uh, could we get Charlie's wife up here? Come Oopsie's on, Charlie's name. wife. Come on. What's Poopsie. Her name? Poopsie. Poopsie. Poopsie, come up here. <laughs> That's her name, Poopsie. Poopsie, yeah. Poopsie, would you tell us a, a little about your romance with Charlie? Because he's been doing a lot of lying about you here. He said he never kissed you before you got married. Is this oh, true? Yeah, in Holland, uh, they don't go by that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they kiss on the first date. They kiss on the first date? Oh, yeah. We don't. Uh... We don't believe you. You don't fool around at all, huh? No, I don't say not. And, and yeah, you... She didn't tell me that. She didn't... <laughs> you start all over again. Apparently, they haven't told you anything, huh? <laughs> well, has Charlie been a good husband? And the... has he ever gotten fresh since you got married? Oh, no. no. Uh -uh. He's a perfect gentleman. You, you love him, oh, and oh, he, he sure loves do. you, and you, you're soon going to have grandchildren, I suppose. Huh? I think so. I have a married gonna... daughter. Huh? I have a married daughter, too. You have a married daughter, uh -huh. already? Well, you you are a professional babysitter then, huh? Uh huh. Uh, he took care of me when I was young. He took care of you. When you... <laughs> I was Let me baby. get this straight. He was, he was, was your babysitter, babysitter <laughs> and then he married you. She had a brother, was the same age than I was. When we was fifteen years old, her brother and me. Then her father and mother had a little baby, and that is this little girl, Alice. It's a real, a real name. We call her Poopsie, but. Uh, <laughs> See, Why do you call uh, her Pupsy? I don't know. Uh, I've changed lots of names. She was skinny, and, and when I married her, and no, I call her lots of times the Daily Double. Mm -hmm. so, well, Pupsy, so, you go back in the audience, and thanks for coming up, and you're a real cute guy. Charlie, do you ever get homesick for the Zyda Z? There must be a big difference between Holland and California, isn't there? Well, I tell you, Grouchy, there are so many Dutchmans here around Bellflower that once in a while we get together and it is just like you're in Holland. Oh, really? We go down to the woman's hall in Bellflower. Whose hall? The, the woman's hall. The woman's hall. Uh-huh. You're a pretty wild guy when you get yeah, out on yeah. there. What goes and, on at this, this woman's hall? Well, usually they get me on the stage. Yeah. And I have to sing some songs, cowboy song, and things like that. Cowboy? Tell a few jokes. Does uh, Rowena ever get in the act? How about it, Rowena? Well, I, I have dance, a little uh, dance? comedy dance worked up. Do you? I can what do. could you give us that? Sure. Where, 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 sure, I have to take my shoes here? off. Is that okay? Take your shoes. Okay. Take everything off. I don't oh. care. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. You said uh, you and uh, you and Wild Charlie over here each win 50 <laughs> bucks. Here's 50 for you, and here's 50 for the pater. Thank you. Bang, gang. Bang. Would you like and, some music? Oh, oh, could I have some rock and roll or something? Some real fast yeah. rock and roll. Dutch rock and roll. Step out there no. on the launching pad no. where you'll make room. Okay. Have room. is the girl that wouldn't let that fella kiss her the first time. Experience. Imagine what goes on in Bellflower. 
Well, that was a real Dutch treat, and my advice to you is don't ever do that in front of those chickens. <laughs> or you'll be selling nothing but scrambled eggs. <laughs> well, you're the uh, average couple that we get up here, and that's... Average... <laughs> And it's refreshing to see such a nice relationship between father and daughter and mother. Thank you. And you're a wonderful family, and good luck on your marriage, Rowena. Thank you very much. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. And you selected world capitals. I'll give you the capital. You give me the country. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. George? Oh, no, Panama. I seen George yet. Judge, this is George. This is Rowena. How do you do, Rowena? Did you see her? Dinner? I did. Yeah, I watched it from out there. Oh. Did it do anything for you? Crazy. <laughs> All right, and what country is Buenos Aires the capital? Of what country is Buenos Aires the capital? Rio de Janeiro? No. No, what country? <clears throat> Argentina? Argentina? Argentina is right. You don't have one right. Uh, of what country is right? Prague the capital? P R A G U E. Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia to you, too. And you have two right. Of what country is Bangkok the capital? Siam. Siam is good enough for me. Get the next one right, and you'll have $1,000. Hey, you don't spend all your time in that. Exercise, <laughs> do you? Of what country is Tirana the capital? T-I-R-A-N-A. Al Albania. Oh, boy, you're too smart. <laughs> Now you've won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back at the end of the show and try to double your money. You know we have a new arrangement with the wheel. You've seen the show, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. And you might get a crack at five or even ten thousand. So go over there and sit down and think it over. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, Groucho, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Austin Everett Goodell, or Everett Austin Goodell. It's a very imposing name. It is, isn't it? Uh, well, you should remember it because they were on our show several years ago, and I thought it might be fun for them to come back and you could talk to them and see what they've been doing in the meantime. You so thought it would be fun. I thought it would be fun. And you engineered this thing? You I, see? well, you know, with the help of our staff. Well, uh, I'm there's deep, no deeply grateful. Oh, I'm glad you are because there's no turning back. They're waiting out here now. Uh, <laughs> Would you come in, uh, Goodell's, please? Welcome to your Betcha Live. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Now, Mrs. Goodell, I, I know you had a very charming and poetic name, but I've forgotten it. What was it? It has me. Oh, yes, has me. Now, ever things are beginning to come back to me now. Didn't you tell me you once lived on some lake that uh, had a very long name? The Lake of G's in Webster, Mass. Yes, I live near Lake Sharkagagog, Manchagagog, Chobanagungamog. As I recall, Everett, you had a number of hobbies when you were here last time. Uh, do you still have uh, a lot of these hobbies, or have you some new ones? Philosophy, science, uh, songwriting, and uh, I still study science. What kind of a job do you have, Everett? I'm a, an elevator operator, what they call uh, familiarly a car. I'm a car jockey. Oh. Well, if I remember correctly, Everett, you were inclined to be musical. Didn't you write a lot of popular songs? Well, I wrote uh, a couple of songs entitled uh, Ngongpa and Ong Tut Sat, respectively, but they, they didn't sell very well. <laughs> I can't understand that. Were these uh, English songs? English madrigals or something? And they were written in Sanskrit. Oh. I wrote a better, uh, Could better you one since one then. Uh, would you? you like to hear a, in a few bars? Uh, yeah, have you yes. got any other dead languages you could sing a song in? Many words uh, come through all the way through from the Sanskrit in their uh, most perfect meaning, mm -hmm. such as the word mathematics, which comes from the uh, Sanskrit meta, I mean, love song? Uh, intelligence, wisdom. Mm -hmm. Is this a love song you're going to sing in Sanskrit? This song has everything. It has? It's entitled uh, Ong Tut Sat in a Little Rock Hut. A whole Gerta Deva Shobante unto him of what? Oh, tut sat, oh, tut sat, tut, oh, tut sat, evam aham chamaraya cha aham na asmitrate, samana kurve to your pranayama lama, ekam, oh, tut sat, oh, tut sat, tut, oh, tut sat, of a shilla vase man. That's not quite, not quite all of it. Well, now that Presley's in the army, I, I think you've got a great future ahead of you. 
Right. Apparently, you get a lot of fun out of life, Everett and Hamzik. You wouldn't know to look at him, but he climbed Mount Whitney twice in a pair of tennis shoes. Just in tennis shoes? Well, he had some white ducks with him, too. Oh. Well, what'd they do, fly along? No, it's those, uh, you well, know... I've enjoyed this conversation tonight. I haven't understood any of it, but I rarely do. Now, you selected Mother Goose rhymes. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Are you ready? Where did Mary's lamb follow her one day? What do I have to say? To you say what she tells day. you. All right, followed her to school one day. That's right. You now have one right. Hibbity hop to the barber shop to get what? <coughs> to get a, a, a haircut, I suppose. <laughs> well, that would be logical, but this isn't logical. This is Mother Goose. Hibbity hop to the barber shop to get what? Well, anyway, it's Boy, a stick of... Boy, those are Mother Goose that I haven't heard for Oh, now, come now. now. Hibbity hop the barber shop to get a stick of candy. One for me and one for you and one for Sister Annie or something. Oh, yeah. So, anyway... anyway you, you now have one wrong. One wrong. Now, don't get the next one wrong. Who swiped the Queen of Hearts tarts? The Queen the of... King of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The Neighbor of Hearts, he stole those tarts right. and took them clean away. Now you have one right again. All right, now, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Finish it. Doctor, Doctor, lawyer, lawyer merchant, merchant thief. thief. No, I ain't no merchant thief. Or chief. Well. <laughs> we have two right now. <laughs> Seesaw, Marjorie, door, Jackie shall have what? A new master. That's right. Three right now. Get the next one right and you'll have $1,000. Monday's child is fair of face. What is Tuesday's child? Tuesday. Full of grace. Full of grace. You've got four in a row and you win $1,000. <laughs> Now, you want $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at five or even 10000 So we'll go over there and sit down and think about it, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> that means that both of our couples can try for the double chance at five or $10,000 tonight. So now we have two couples who can try for the big question. And first, to tell us their decision, Charlie and Rowena Heimstra. Well, you won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 What are you going to do? I'm well, not going to try. We decided quitting? that we quit because... Well, uh, that's... Why are you quitting? Well, I tell you. She wants to get married, and $500 is going to come in real handy. Mm -hmm. Rowena always does the eggs for me, and when she gets married, I have nobody to do the eggs. What about... $500. What about Poopsie? Well, uh, no, poops, I can't get her interested in chicken. <laughs> but $500, I can buy an egg cleaner and grater, but can take the place of Rowena. <laughs> <after she's married. laughs> and, I'm, and I'm so glad. You must admit that the Dutch are a practical people. <laughs> And I'm well, why can't her husband get one of those things then and don't get married? <laughs> you, you, uh, you make your own decision. We yeah. congratulate you for winning the thousand and thanks for being on the show. Thank yeah. you, you bet your life. And it was a and, wonderful dance. And this uh, uh, egg cleaner, I'm going to call it the Groucher egg cleaner. I, I, so I remember you every day. I've never had a higher tribute. <laughs> right, bring out the next couple. Mr. and Mrs. Everett Austin Goodell, would you uh, come back out, please? Well, you won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 Now, what are you going to do? We'll try for the... We'll play the wheel. You are going for the big money. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, we have a different arrangement from the last time you were on the show. You get to pick two numbers. Go ahead, and I'll pick the first number, and I'll explain it as we go along. Oh, What's the first on number? Four and five. Four, and you want five. Uh -huh. Four is the first one? Uh -huh. Four for 10,000 and five yes. for 5,000. Is that right? All right. Now, if neither of these numbers comes up, the question is why 2,000. Okay? Mm -hmm. Give it a spin. She wanted me to spin. Well, All right.
numbers were four and five, and it landed on uh, two. So this question is why two thousand dollars. Well, that's worth going for, don't you think? Certainly. Two thousand dollars. You can buy your own elevator. Oh, you can buy a television set and watch uh, your show. You're better off buying an elevator and charging admission. <laughs> All right, the Winter Olympic Games have been awarded the United States only twice. In 1960, they'll be held in Squaw Valley, California. Where were the Winter Olympics held in 1932? <laughs> <laughs> The only, the, ones, the only ones we remember are uh, Helsinki, Finland. No, this is in the United States. <laughs> in the United States. Well, this was Lake Placid, New York. That's that one. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wind up with $500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio.